Hello friends, so today in this video, we're going to discuss the first three problems from the latest lead code bi-weekly contest 52. So let's start. The first three problems are good according to me. So we're going to discuss all the three problems one by one. So the first problem is sorting the sentences. It actually states that, so you are given some S string in which a string, so like these are different words in a string. Now every word has a number attached to it at the end of every word you can see a number now this actually tells you the order these words should be placed excluding these numbers so this is the first word this is the second word third word fourth word so you just have to reconstruct the original s string now as you can see the number can be up, up to 200 so you have to first form the word then extract out the last alphabet like last uh, integer then according to lee like according uh, like you have to uh, place all these words and form the new string now you can do this in a very simple manner just uh, what you can do here is just extract out each word then from each word take out the la like last uh, like keep popping out the last uh, what you can say last character such that it is an integer if it is a, if it is an integer then only because the word the the word formed with a uh, characters like characters which are uh, like alphabets and it like digit so the digit only defines the position so and it is at the end so you just extract out one word consisting of the like the alphabets and the digits then keep popping out the last character okay from this word such that it is an integer and when it is not an integer then stop then the rest of the word is us like the rest of the word which is remaining we have to put that now according to the given integer you have extracted out from each word what you can do here is you can make a map out of it so or you can put them into a set whatever you can so that they should be in a sorted order because in map uh, the so you can make this as a key and this as the like the value itself so as you can see one is the first word the second the second word and so on so you can just place them according into the map so they can easily like accordingly they can sort them out in the map itself and you just iterate out the map and print out the whole words so that's the whole uh, logic for this problem i can show you the code part make a map then insert a space in the end because that's very essential because there is no space at the end for the last word so you can you you'll stop for a word so you can take out that okay this is a word like keep extracting out characters until you find a space when you find a space it means that you have completed a word and you will now process over it but for the last word there is no space so you will insert a space so that like uh, you can do this in a for loop so it read over for loop take out every character if it is a if it is a like a character or integer just put that into a word like uh, an empty string so that we are uh, like like creating a word okay whenever we find an empty string which means that my word is completed we first have to extract out the number for first we have to extract out that number in the form of an integer only so we will do a while loop from the back because we have to keep on extracting out from the back if it is greater than or equal to zero or less than n or like nine it means that it is an integer keep popping out and create the like the new string which is of the uh, digits only and just keep popping out that digit when you have extracted out the whole digit part convert that into integer using that stui function which is like string to integer function when you have converted into integer just store that integer or map that integer to that word in the map and then just make the word uh, empty so that we can iterate over the next word in the end we can create a new string answer which is just iterating over the whole map again and just storing out that because now the map has a position and the word itself so position and word so we'll just uh, like because the map is sorted out so we will like add all the words and then put a space so word space word space but there's a last space also end because let's assume that you put the space shivam space and like coding space but this is the whole sentence but coding space this is also a space at the end so you will just pop out the last character because that's the space itself and then you just print out the answer i hope you understand the logic part now and the code itself the second problem is incremental memory leak it actually states that you have two memory sticks okay you can assume that there's some uh, memory stick or some stack whatever you can call and you have that there is a program which at each second what some memory which is increasing by one or like it is increasing by yeah it so at the first second that program needs one 
byte of memory at the second second it requires two byte of memory the third second it requires three bytes of memory so now you have two sticks okay and you will keep on assigning the memory to that program until you are short of the memory and then your program will crash out so this is also given in the problem is uh, you will allocate the memory to the program from whichever stick which has more memory at that current point of time okay so you, you can just do a while loop okay and what you can do here is like just match that okay which stick has more memory now at this point if it has more memory and what is the memory i require at this point you can keep a track of an i variable or an n variable which is like a time variable so at the first moment you have required one memory the second moment you require two memory if the stick if the largest stick has that much amount of memory you can provide that and go to the next second if you do not have that much amount of time the program will crash and in the end you just have to like uh, print out the crash time the memory one crash and memory two crash like the memory which is left after the program crashes out uh, so it's a very simple problem you can just iterate over it uh, n is the time initiate is one or like the memory required is one you will just do a while loop which is like an infinite loop uh, so if m1 is greater than or equal to m2 which means that my m1 stick is more so so it means that okay my m1 stick has more memory than m2 so if the m1 stick has more memory and but it is less than the memory required by the program the memory required by the program at the current instance is n if it is smaller than n we just break out of this for loop because now my program crashes out if my m1 stick has more memory then i will just subtract out like n from m1 and we'll just do the for loop for the next iteration we'll do the same thing for m2 stick and at every stick we'll just increment my answer by like by n by one because the, in the next next step we require two bits or in the next step we require three bits but the time will increment by one only and in the end the time is n the memory left after the crash of m1 stick is in the m1 variable and the m2 stick is in the m2 variable i hope you understand the logic part of this also you can look at the code also here the third problem is, uh, is good but it's not too difficult to implement like you have to just understand the logic part so it actually tells that there is a box which is like lying around in this format so there is some uh, there is some stone okay there is some or uh, there is some obstacle obstacle as you can see this is the gray box gray uh, and this is some empty spaces so now you can uh, you can assume that or you can imagine that that this is a box or uh, like a like a horizontal box and you can just rotate it vertically and it becomes like this in this format and you have to do this for the same thing like this is the box you will rotate it 90 degree and it will form in this format in the same format now because due to gravity this uh, like these stones will fall upon each other but in the same column so like as you can see if you just uh, uh, imagine that if you just rotate it 90 degree this block will follow this block same because this obstacle it will not fall below it and you can form this and for this also you can see that because this obstacle here this will not fall but this will fall onto this part and you can you have to just return out an array defining the final state okay now first it seems complicated but what you can observe here is the first thing which which i observe here is let's make the or what you can see, see like what i observe here is like whatever cell is there okay due to gravity it will fall on the same column but on the like it will keep on going to the right side this block will keep on going to the right side until either there's an obstacle or there's a stone so you can start from this point so if you take out this box okay you can also rotate it but let's assume that if you don't rotate it just assume in this there's a so just assume that there's a gravitational pull uh, like pushing or like a string pushing this box to the right side so this two stones will be pushed on this part so there's an obstacle they will uh, stop and this will push to this point and then because there is an obstacle it will not go away so it will come to this point and then you can rotate it and that's the answer and also as you can see that you can just push this on all to this part this is an obstacle uh, this is an obstacle so what you can easily do here is uh, what i actually did is first rotate this in the same configuration without the gravity just take this whole box rotate it 90 degree and form the new box okay with this same configuration like nothing gravity is applied now when the gravity is applied what you can uh, what you can think in this problem is i can draw it out also to make it uh, more clear and there's one, one more case also you have to look into but uh, the case is also very simple so what you can observe in this is let's assume that we draw it out so let, i'm just drawing out for one column you can just uh, think over for all the columns also so i'm just rotating this box without 
the gravity so let's assume that these are the uh, stones okay and these are empty spaces just uh, just uh, forget about the obstacles now we'll talk about the obstacles also but uh, just forget about the obstacles now for this column it only has the stones and the empty spaces now when you rotate it uh, like maybe after rotation this is the configuration now you have to uh, somehow fall these blocks down so as you can see whenever there's an empty space what you can do here is i can make a vector okay and push the empty spaces to uh, the empty spaces index in this so let's say that this is the uh, so this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 the fifth index is empty okay whenever you find out an obstacle and there is some empty space available obviously that will fall below if there is a hash here so this empty space will not be there so because if i trade over some empty space and the uh, or some hash or like some block whatever you call and there is no empty space in the vector so it means that there is no empty space below it so this block will remain at this point because there is no empty space so obviously that will remain at this point but if there is some empty space obviously that will fall onto it so that you have to consider here is now as you can see so if this is an empty space and whenever you find a hash you or whenever you find a block you will just check that whether there is some empty space if there is some empty space this will actually fall onto it now there is one catch when this block fall onto this empty space like this empty space this will become filled but this app block will become empty space i hope you get the point so at the same time when you remove this empty space you will create this empty space so now you are popping out this element and you will pushing out four i hope you get the point so now you're again uh, seeing that this is empty space push three now you are again seeing this empty space which is two so now when you see a hash obviously at which place it it will fall it will fall to the first empty space you have ever seen which is four okay because there is all the empty spaces here so this will fall into this part so as you can see i'm pushing from the back and taking out from the front what data such can use that q so i've used a q here so so that we can push uh, all the empty spaces at the back and whenever i fear like see a uh, empty space i will push in the back and whenever i find a block i will check that okay whether there is some empty space in the queue if there is some empty spaces in the queue available i will pop out the first element because that's the place where this block will fall on and thus i will swap this hash onto that position and now this will put become an empty space so i will insert this index into the queue i hope you get the point and uh, yeah i will just do this again recursively like not recursively just iterate from bottom to top whenever you find out a hash okay you will just uh, see that whether there is some empty space below it if there is empty space below it just make that hash go to that empty space and like because now the space become empty you will insert that space empty space into the queue and now talking about the obstacle let's in that like there is some hash here okay there is some space then there is some uh, obstacle here then there is some space and there is some obstacle now this is the this is the uh, hash which is at the end so we don't have to do anything because let's say that there is some empty queue the queue which is of which is storing out the empty queue is not empty empty queue is storing out whether there is some empty block below it okay so i'm just marking out this is not empty i'm just representing that this is an empty queue which is telling us that whether there is some empty block below it or not so there is no block so we just iterate over next to the block because that's a last place now there is some empty space here so i will push that empty space which is like 0 1 2 3 4 so i will push that 4 into this empty space now this is an obstacle now can this and so let's say that there is no obstacle here so this is an empty space i will push that now this is a hash or like a hash so this will fall if there is no obstacle here it will obviously fall to this position because obviously that will fall to the first position which is 4 but because or like this is 3 sorry but because there is no like there is an obstacle here it means that whatever empty spaces are below it that will vanish out my like my position at which i will fall now is like after this if there is some empty space or not so it means that whenever i feel an obstacle i will have to delete all my empty spaces which i have stored till now because now i have to start afresh and i will make my queue empty so this queue is turning out what are the empty spaces below me and whenever i feel or whenever i find out an obstacle it means that now i have no empty space below it below me because now i have faced the obstacle so i just have to make my empty queue zero 
I hope you get the point. And that what we, what that's what we have to do for all the columns, and that's the answer. So I'll tell you the code part. This code is actually rotating the whole array or like the whole matrix. I'm making a new matrix. Okay. Of the so this is the n. This is n. So now my dimension changes out, and then we just uh, see that at what position that so if this is the like if i iterate over the new array or like new matrix where this block is coming from so this is 0 comma 0 and this 0 comma 0 is matching out to 0 so the, the as you can see the the row is as you can see the last row if this is the first row this is the last row and the column is same so that's what we are done that's what we are done the column is same but the row is changed and we just switched out and we just make a new you can just uh, this is a very standard problem you just have to rotate an image or a matrix by 90 degree or like n times 90 degree what is the final matrix so like that's the whole uh, new matrix and then we just find out the new matrix and what we'll do we will after finding out the new matrix which is like the matrix we have we will just do the same thing for each column you just iterate over each column make a new queue now move from bottom to top okay whenever i find out a star it means that it means that it's an obstacle so i will make my queue empty so whatever process you can use to make the queue empty i'm just making my queue equal to a new queue so either i can pop out all the elements from the queue or i can make my queue equal to a new queue such that my queue becomes empty obviously okay it's just using more memory but don't care about the memory now else if i find out an empty space what i'll do i'll just push that empty space into the queue which is that's what i'm doing pushing that into the queue else if i found out a obstacle now sorry now uh, a hash now or a block now what i'll do i will first i have two options if it's a block i will check that whether that block so whether some position queue like position is like whether it's some empty space below me if there is empty space below me or not if it, if there is no empty space below me i will check that whether the queue is empty we just continue on because we do not have to swap it anything out but now if there is an empty queue below me what i'll do i will swap the current position i am on with the top position i can so we can just swap both of these positions and now because as we have seen now because we have swapped them out the the current position is used from the queue so we'll just pop out the top element from the queue but also we have to push that the current position or the current uh row because now that block has also become empty so we'll push that block index into the column and then we just iterate over it over it again so that for every column we are doing this and that's the whole logic you can just look over this code and uh, this code is just to check i, I was having some wrong answer so yeah i hope you get the point how i'm doing this if you have understand the logic part you can easily understand the code also and yeah we just print out the last uh, matrix I hope you understand the logic and the code. If you still have an article, you can mention it. I'll see you next one until I keep coding.